Right, hello guys and welcome to today's video. In today's video I'm going to be doing an Xbox Elite Controller V2 settings and also my Modern Warfare updated settings such as sensitivity, controller layout, all that good stuff because you guys have been requesting this mainly for the Elite V2 controller because I'm guessing some of you guys probably do have this controller. I want to know the best way to set it up for Call of Duty and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to showcase to you guys my settings that work for me and allow me to get some pretty insane gameplays here in Modern Warfare. So I'm not going to keep you too long. Here it is. Let's get into it. So as you can see, I've only made one profile specifically for Call of Duty. That's what I bought the controller for. Uh, I haven't really messed around with too much for other games that I play. I play like Formula 1 and stuff. I don't know if, I don't know if there's really too much you can do for games like that. But we're not talking about Formula 1. We're talking about Call of Duty. So let's get into it. So as you can see, I haven't changed much here. All the buttons are the same. You know, there's no point changing the actual buttons. This, they would be the craziest and silliest thing to do. But... One thing I have done is changed, obviously, the buttons to the paddles. And right now, I'm going to say to you guys, you don't have to use all four paddles. Currently, as I, as I am making this video, I still only use one paddle. And the one paddle I use is in the P2 section. As you can see, P2 is mapped to A. And the reason it's mapped to A is because in Call of Duty, I've got it on default and default for both settings, like the stick and the buttons. And what that means is, basically, A is jump for me, like just like it is for everyone else. And being able to jump whilst controlling the thumbstick at the same time is massive. Now, if you guys didn't know from my previous settings video for Modern Warfare, I did use to use stick to move because I did not have the Elite V2 controller. And that was because obviously I needed a way to be able to jump shot whilst being able to keep my thumb on the thumbstick. And as much as stick to move is great, and if you don't have this controller, I'd highly recommend, highly recommend using stick to move. Being able to jump with stick to move did mean I had to press down on the, on the thumbstick, which can make your aim a little bit wonky here and there every so often. But instead of that, I can now use A as a paddle, and instead of use, like using the thumbstick, I can now aim with the thumbstick without having to put pressure and just being able to maintain my aim whilst jumping using the paddle. Allows me to just be much more accurate whilst performing a jump shot in Modern Warfare. So that's all I do. That's all that's really there for me. Uh, I've got this map to Y here, X and B, but again, I don't use these paddles, so it's up to you here. And you know, you can mess around with this a little bit. Also, side note, as you can see, that is a long paddle showcased there in the P2 section. I am actually using the shorter paddle, the one that is in the P1 section, as you can see on the image here. I actually have that one in P2 because my thumb, my well, my forefinger sometimes overlapped onto it. So I'd like press down like accidentally with my forefinger. So yeah, do be aware of that. Do mess around with the paddles a little bit. Make sure you get the right paddle length. It's definitely a personal preference thing there, but I use the shorter paddle in the P2 section. Next up, left stick and right stick. Now this is actually something that is quite important and I'm sure some people don't know about this, but you have different assignments here. So obviously you have the primary shift, ignore that, just keep it on primary. Sensitivity curve though, again, keep that on default. Now, as long as your controller hasn't got any like stick drift or anything, cause I don't know how long you guys might've had your controllers, but currently, as you can see, I don't have any stick drift, perfectly fine working controller, no problem at all, but one thing I have done is change my calculation. Now, the reason this is important is you've got radial, axis independent, and true diagonals. Now, I can't put like the scientific reasoning behind why this is just better, but I believe this is just a more precise, as you can see, like it's just constant. Everywhere I move my thumbstick, you can see it's just perfectly aligned, perfectly rotating as I am rotating the thumbstick. And I've been using true diagonals right now. Obviously, this is on the left stick, so this is just for moving, like running to like left, right, back, you name it. But I also have it on the right stick, the exact same settings on the right stick. And this is where it's more important because this, this setting here allows you to be extremely precise. Like every movement you make is tracked by the controller. Like there's no, and I'll show you the difference with like axis dependent. You can see like there's a little bit more, how would I put it? It's a little more stagmented as you can see, like it's not as precise, but if I change it back to true diagonals, it's just smooth, completely smooth. Every time I move the thumbstick, completely smooth, no stopping. It's just tracking the exact movement of my thumbstick. So definitely be using these settings on your left and right stick. Do not change these from this. Make sure you change calculation to true diagonals. Trust me, you will notice a 100% benefit to your aim if you use this. Next up is triggers. Now I've set these to what they are. Now here's the thing as well. So you've got trigger stops on these. Now on the left one, I do have this to full like as you can see I can press it takes a lot of pressing it basically it's like a normal press it's a normal press as if you had a normal Xbox controller but on the right trigger I do have the trigger all the way to the bottom as you can see when I as soon as I touch it it basically goes to full instantly compared to the 
Oh, hold on, go back. Go to the left trigger. It takes a while to build up because this is my obviously the left left trigger is for my aiming. It's an aim down sight. But with the right trigger, that's for you know being able to shoot quickly. So if I want to spam a foul real quick, say I'm using the foul, I can do this really really quickly, just like that. And that's how you see like videos where I have like a trigger finger with the foul. So make sure you have your right stick bump uh, trigger set to the bottom setting to make sure the trigger is as as little bit of as least amount of like pressure to put on it as possible because again if you're using a foul or something and even just like being able to shoot and then not shoot and then back to shooting again you want to be able to get off that, getting off that trigger and back on the trigger as quick as possible next up vibration i have turned these all the way down now yes you can turn vibration off in modern warfare but i've turned these all the way down anyway because vibration is the worst thing you could have on your controller now it's great for you know if you want to have that feel of being in the game and everything but just think about if the controller is vibrating everywhere whilst you're trying to aim or shoot you're not gonna be able to you're not gonna be able to be steady on the controller so in my personal preference or in my personal opinion make sure you turn all these off bring them all the way down so that there's no vibration going on and this setting here absolutely does not matter so yeah that's the uh, settings for my controller on the elite v2 I'm now going to go on to the next part where I'm going to show you my Modern Warfare settings and go through all of those, go through why I use like, uh, don't use stick to move anymore, go through my sensitivity, my dead zones, all that good stuff. So yeah, will be a little bit of a cut, but I'll catch you guys in the sensitivity part of this video. Right, and welcome back guys. And now we're on to the second segment of today's video, which is going to be my controller settings and sensitivity here in Modern Warfare because as you guys know I did make a video a long long time ago about my settings and sensitivity in Modern Warfare but a few things have changed since then such as obviously I've got a new controller so things have changed for myself and not only that the game has had a few updates that have actually changed a few things in the game such as there being a dead zone but I will discuss that in a second but let's get into it so the button layout is on default now for me instead of a uh, button I believe what was it called what did I have it on before I believe it was yeah stick to move now stick to move was obviously to jump with the thumb stick you can use that setting if you don't have a v2 or don't have a, like a scuff or something with paddles in the back but i have it set to default as a is my jump mantle so that i can then set my paddle to be a to be jump and mantle that's the only reason i have it like that stick layout on default invert vertical look is d is disabled and my dead zone now this is something i like to discuss now this is something that's quite important uh, in Modern Warfare, people tell you to set this so that there's no stick drift. Now, as you guys saw in my Xbox V2 settings part of this video, I have no stick drift. Like, the controller has absolutely no stick drift whatsoever. But in Modern Warfare, I have stick drift. Like, when I bring up the map for Warzone and stuff, there is stick drift. So there is something wrong with the game, okay? Because I've seen people like try have their setting at zero and not have stick drift, but this is a fully-fledged, working, normal controller with no problems whatsoever. And so I've basically given up on the point of trying to not have stick drift because to have not, not have stick drift for me, I had to have it at like 0 0.9. And the problem with that is you create yourself like an artificial delay. Like it, it means when you move the stick, it isn't actually going to move with, with you doing it at the same time. Basically, there's going to be a delay to you being able to move the stick. So I've kept this on 0 0.05. I believe that's the best thing. I don't know if that was the default. I did mess around a little bit. I put to like 0.02 at one point, but then at that point I actually got like way too much stick drift. But at 0.05, I do still get stick drift, but I need to be able to compete and be able to like move and aim quickly enough. But basically, I do believe it's something that is wrong with the game. There is just not much that I can change about that. But basically, I set my dead zone to 0.05 so I can have as little stick drift as possible. It does still happen here and there, but again, I am using a fully fledged working controller so i don't understand really but basically i think there's something wrong with the game in that's in that regards but next up horizontal and vertical six sensitivity both on six six this is something that, again i'd say is more personal preference but if you guys want to have a good base to start with and like work from there and be able to scale it up or scale it down i play on six six i do believe basically you should be playing on between a five and an eight if you want a perfect sensitivity i know some of you guys will be out there will be telling you that you play on like 2020 20 and stuff like that and if that works for you that's perfect but just saying just for you guys to know having a higher sensitivity isn't always the best option the best option is always to make sure you have the most precise sensitivity yes 2020 will be able to allow you to like turn on people and be able to always snap onto targets quickly but if you're not accurate with 2020 sensitivity there's no point using that sensitivity so personally i went with 6.6 six. works well for me it just feels perfect for me in game and then next up, this part applies to, so low zoom, this is obviously basically iron sights, anything as it says there, less than 3.25 magnification, meaning 
any gun with like an iron sight, your know, reflex sight, stuff like that. And this is what I set it to. I set it to 0.80. It just works perfect for me. I have played around with it here and there every so often, but personally, I believe 0.85 or 0.80, anywhere around there, is just about perfect, at least in my regards or in my opinion. And if you guys are using the V2 controller, I would definitely like recommend going with these settings because obviously I'm using the V2 controller, so it will apply to you guys as well. You will get the same feeling, I guess, as me. Obviously, the only difference is as well, I am using a low stick on the left stick. I forgot to mention that in my V2 video or segment. And then on the right stick, I am using a tool stick. So just bear that in mind when you are messing around with these uh, sensitivity options. I left this on one. This is obviously if you basically your sniper scopes, anything more than 3.25 zoom. And I just find this to be normal, like, OK, I, I don't really feel the need to like increase it because some people would say you might need to increase it so you can drag the sniper scope. But for me, I'm able to drag the scope perfectly in line with people anyway on this egg. So I've kept it like that. Haven't changed this at all. Next up, aim response curve time. Now this is something that I'll discuss in a bit of detail. Basically, standard and dynamic are the ones you want to go for. Linear, if you, if you can master it, is okay. But honestly, I think linear is the worst out of the three. You either want to go with standard, which is basically the typical Call of Duty. Normal, not as Call of Duty has always been, is standard. But dynamic... Is basically how to put it is a, as it says there a more fine aim control and you will feel that it's more precise like you, uh, basically dynamic is better for longer distances but standard is I'd say just about a little maybe a little bit better in the short range but dynamic does it all and personally I believe dynamic just works very well in the game like especially in warzone where you're gonna be doing those longer distance gunfights you're gonna need a lot more precise aim where you're gonna want to move the stick a little bit and you don't want it to go all over the place you want to be able to be as precise as possible and dynamic allows you to do that so personally i would go with dynamic definitely works well for me next up controller vibration obviously i disabled this on my actual v2 controller but i would disable it in game as well in case you don't have that setting to disable it because there's no point in having your controller vibrating like i said before if your controller is vibrating in your hand basically you're just gonna have your aim going all over the place and it's not very helpful next up aim assist standard keep it on standard don't go with precision don't go with focusing simply because with standard when you are strafing you get aim assist but if you use precision or focusing you get no aim assist when strafing so bear that in mind precision and focusing are great if you're someone who like sits at a window and doesn't move but if you want to strafe and have aim assist during a gunfight you need to keep it on standard obviously do not disable this thing because your game's just going to be going all over the place next up weapon mount activation double tap ads if i need to weapon mount i try not to most of the time because i do think it's a very terrible mechanic it's a bit of an annoying mechanic and i don't like to abuse it too much but when I need to use this, when I need to get that precise, accurate shot, double tap ADS to make sure that I'm not accidentally doing it. And, you know, it's, it's just very convenient. Weapon mount X, movement exit enabled. This basically means I can just move, you know, if I push my stick anyway, I can just move off the wall. Aim down sight behavior, hold. I don't know why you change this. Equipment behavior, hold. Uh, use to reload behavior, tap to reload for me. Some people have got this like set differently for like textual tap. This all depends on Warzone. This is something that I'd say is more personal preference, but I just use a tap to reload. Something that I'm used to and I'm just never going to change really. Deplete ammo switch. Doesn't really matter in my opinion. Slide behavior. I've got this set to tap due to a certain mechanic in the game, which is if you double tap B and then jump, you can do a slide cancel. So having this on hold is basically makes it impossible to do this mechanic. But if you have it on tap, I can double tap B and then press the paddle for A to jump and this creates a slide cancel. Now if you guys don't know what the slide cancel is, do search up a video, search slide cancel for Modern Warfare and you'll just see what I'm just um, talking about. But a slide cancel is pretty OP in Modern Warfare, I definitely suggest giving it a shot and trying it out and having this setting set to tap once you learn how to do the uh, slide cancel. Auto mode forward is undisabled, all my experience disabled and all these are disabled, enabled. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all my settings. Uh, brightness is on 45 in case you wanted to know because my, if some of you guys have been interested in the way my game looks and that. My safe area is set as like, I don't know how to, as minimal as possible. Basically, so everything I can see is on my screen. Film green, set that to zero. Do not have that on. As you can see, what this shows is having film green on just makes everything harder to see. So there's no point having that. Tool tips is disabled. Subtitles. Subtitles is up to you. I've seen some people use this so they can know when a kill streak's calling in or certain things are coming in on the map. I also use Deuteranopia. Uh, as you can see, in my personal opinion, it just looks a lot more clearer. Basically, the standard is obviously disabled. 
if you go to Deuteronopia, it just looks a lot more colourful. Like you can see the one, two, and three just a little bit more clearer, in my personal opinion. So that I've set that to both. And then I got world motion blur and weapon motion blur both to disable. Make sure you're turning those off because if you are spinning at like or turning at a certain angle like very quickly, you're not going to see things very clearly. Again, it's going to be not, it's going to be really blurry. Again, it, it makes you look like you're in the war zone, which is great and everything for like realism and stuff. But if you want to actually see people when you're turning very quickly, I would disable both of these settings. And uh, mini map, change this to square. It's a bigger mini map. Definitely change this to square. As you can see. The square minimap is just a little bit more bigger than the round one, so you get a little bit more information. Definitely change it to square. Minimap rotation is enabled for me. That just means so when I'm turning, I can still see the minimap, like the map, the way I want it to see. Uh, this, I've never actually changed this, to be honest. And all this here is for other things like in-game chat and that, which is all up to you, you know? But yeah, those are my settings for Model for Actually, let's move on to this. I forgot about this. Let's go on to the audio. It's something that you might, guys might be interested in, but a little thing. Boost high, always keep it on boost high. It's the it's it's basically the best way to hear footsteps. It's the loudest the footsteps will be is using boost high. Master volume, this is the overall volume. Set your music volume to zero. Honestly, when you're playing in game and you have the music going on, you don't want to be hearing the music. It's just something that is is a distraction really. It's gonna it might play the audio for music might play over like a footstep or a certain sound that you need to hear. So I have this set to zero. I don't need to hear the music. Dialogue volume set to full in case like someone says something that i need to hear effects volume i believe this is like grenades and stuff this might also include footsteps i'm not sure but i've got this set to max as well juggernaut music is to save i don't really use the juggernaut anyway hit marker sound effects this is personal preference but personally i like the mw one and then yeah that's pretty much it those are my settings for modern warfare and also my settings for my xbox v2 controller uh you guys requested this video and i decided to obviously make this this video for you guys so try out these settings Give them a shot, see if they work for you. If not, adjust them to your your preferences and needs. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, subscribe and notifications on. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.